going over a couple of games that I really enjoyed in 2016. I'm going to start with Final Fantasy 15. It only came out in November, so I haven't had a big go of it. Um, anyone who's familiar with the game can see the mission I'm doing, and you'll know how far I've gotten, which is not very far at all. But I'm really enjoying it. Uh, I'm really liking the open world setting. It's a huge map. It's very different to previous Final Fantasies. Not in the size of the map, but just the open world setting. It's not quite linear. You can kind of do whatever you want. Uh, within reason. Um, also liking the combat. Uh, it's a bit more like... Uh, it's a bit more like Kingdom Hearts, really, than Final Fantasy. But it works. I can be able to change weapons and just move around the battlefield using warp strikes and dodging, which I'm doing a terrible job of here, but not getting to control your party members is kind of... It's not great, but it works. Noctis has enough to do, he's got enough moves. And this warp strike move is pretty good. So it kind of makes up for it. It's a good departure from the demos, if anyone remembers them. The combat system in the demos was a bit shaky. Uh, you know, it wasn't really flowing that well, but the final game seems to be fine. I'm, I have no problems with it so far. As I said, not that far into it. Maybe it changes, but right now, it's pretty good. Sick. Sick move, Ignis. I'm really liking the uh, the party, even though it's all dudes, and there's not that many of them, but, you know, they have a lot of fun. They're joking with each other, and they give each other shit. And they have enough um, roles in the combat to make up for it. And then, of course, there's the story. So, you're Noctis. And you were going on a bro trip with your bros. Your bachelor bro trip. Um, but then your kingdom got, you know, taken over. So now you gotta put that on hold and drive around in your car listening to Final Fantasy music. And taking photographs. And eating amazing food. And that's pretty much the whole game. Lots of driving, and lots of fighting, and lots of driving. Lots of driving. Get used to driving! Because <laughs> there's a lot of it. But I'm enjoying it anyway. It's good to see... I, I, um, it's been a while since I've played a good Final Fantasy, I suppose. Looking forward to playing more of it and hopefully finishing it. That would be good. Day and night system is really nice too, even if... It really does shorten your game a little bit since you have to stop basically at night when you're at a low level. Kind of annoying, but hopefully it'll open up when I get a bit further in. Loving the food though. I really gotta eat some of this, Ignis. Make me some make me a sandwich. We'll get back to another video in a minute. Yes, I will eat this now. Deus Ex Mankind Divided came out in August, so Deus Ex Human Revolution, the uh, game before this one, came out in the PS3, is one of my favourite games from that generation, so I was really looking forward to Mankind Divided and it's more Deus Ex, so I'm pretty happy about that. There's more, you know, crazy futuristic stuff, there's more... Adam Jensen being a grouchy, sarcastic asshole. There's more inexplicable style everywhere. Crazy augmentations and just supermanning it out of, or Captain America ending it. That's a word now. Out of a helicopter, sure, why not? I just, I just like everything about Deus Ex, like the universe, the, the design, the gameplay anyone who's not familiar, Deus Ex is a first person game, obviously, um, but there's a lot of choice to it, so it's not necessarily a shooter, though you can play it that way if you want, there's a lot of stealth in it, you can play it that way, there's a lot of social action in it, as in you can talk your way out of problems, things like that, 
if anyone's wondering why there's still tutorial prompts on the screen, this is right at the start of the game. So I'm trying not to spoil anything for anybody. Because uh, there is a quite a story to this game. Something Deus Ex does a lot is a lot of highbrow concepts, or at least tries to be highbrow in some cases. Pulls it off most of the time, sometimes it doesn't. Here, normally you'd have to hack this, but I know the super secret code to get through, so I don't need to. Um, and it's a trophy if you want to look it up. But anyway, I really like, I really just like Deus Ex, the franchise, in general. Uh, even if it does have this weird third-person, first-person swap every now and then, just in the game, it's kind of strange, but it works for it. And you can play the game lethally or non-lethally if you want. You know, you can try and get through the whole thing without attacking anybody, without killing anybody, without even being noticed. You can find your different routes around obstacles. So here I could have unlocked the door, or I can just go around the fence. I can unlock this, or I can just punch it. Actually, you're not even able to unlock that. I think you're only able to punch it. Now we've got other situations. We've got this elevator, and I could come down, and I could be right in the line of fire of everybody. Or I could find a different way. Now, if I was specced for combat, you know, being right in the line of fire is fine. I mean, that's where I want to be, but if I'm not, which I usually am, because if I have the option to play stealth, I'll play stealth. I'll go that way. Nice. Superhero landing. So, the story for Deus Ex is really the big draw for me. As I say, they have a lot of... a lot of really cool concepts. So they've got augmentations, so people have like robot arms and legs and brains and things like that. And in the first uh, reboot, Human Revolution, that was all cool. Everybody wanted them. They're great. Except you have this problem with implants. Uh, you need drugs to keep them working. Uh, but then at the end of that game, something really bad happened, and now nobody wants the augmentations anymore. But you're stuck with them. So this got this kind of two-tiered system. Was one way, with everybody wanting the augmentations, and now... It's upside down, with nobody really wanting them, They're trying to get rid of them. It's pretty cool. I'm not really explaining it very well, you kinda have to play it. Anyway, next game. Let it happen again. Firewatch. So, Firewatch is a first person, I guess, walking simulator, if you like. I don't really like that word. Anyway, it's only really called a walking simulator because there's not much interaction to it, but I kind of feel like there's a decent enough in this its own thing. So you are playing the part of a Firewatch guy uh, for the summer in 1986 or 87, something like that. So no GPS and no mobile phones and none of that. You know, nothing that would make the whole thing trivial. Um, but the draw for the game is, it's not necessarily the story, but it's the uh, dialogue and the relationship you build with your boss, I guess? You're volunteering, so could this should still be considered boss's supervisor, uh, Delilah. Uh, so you came out here to escape some shit in your life that wasn't going particularly well. You just wanted to get away from everything, chill out in the American wilderness, watching for fires, I guess, as the name would suggest. Uh, and you're tasked with doing various things as part of your job, like for the first day, which is all this footage is from, you are um, trying to stop people setting off fireworks in the park, because, you know, fire and all that, and that's your job. But there's a lot of, like, funny dialogue between you and Delilah, like stuff you come across in the world, or you'll make a remark about something, uh, and then you have a choice of how to respond, and then your responses are woven in later on in the game. They become kind of like inside jokes between like friends, it's it's good, like it's really well done, it's really well written. As I said, there's not much to the gameplay, it's kind of just walk around and look at things, and then you're just picking your choices on how the story goes, how the relationship develops. But you can be a jerk too, 
Take that shit, 80s teens. And it helps that it's really nice to look at. You know, it's really nice scenery. Art design is really good. Performance though, PS4... Uh, it hitches every now and then, which is usually a case of... Inconsistent frame rate. Like, it'll pause for one frame every five minutes or so. It's not, like, game-changing or anything, but it's kind of annoying. Story-wise, there's little mysteries you come across out in the wilderness. Um, I won't spoil too much of it because the game is all about story, really. But it's good. It is very good. It's kind of short, but it's good. You should give it a go. Right. Welcome to the job. I am Setsuna. It's a JRPG from Tokyo RPG Factory, which is a subsidiary of Square Enix. And it has really, uh, really good snow physics. <laughs> I forgot I did that. Anyway, I am Setsuna is kind of an old school uh, JRPG. You know, kind of like the old Final Fantasies, uh, Chrono Trigger, that kind of thing. In that it's turn based, it's party based, it's ability based. Story wise, uh, it's a lot like. It's basically the story from Final Fantasy X, uh, in that you are chaperoning uh, a young woman on her pilgrimage to the Lost Lands, or whatever. I think that's what it's called in this game. Last Lands, I think is what it's called. That's basically the story. It's fairly cliche, but I mean, this is kind of what the game is going for. It's kind of going for being an old school JRPG. Uh, and it's got a lot of cool systems in it. So it's got, obviously it's got the turn-based stuff, but it's got like the Materia system from Final Fantasy VII. So it's got Sprit Knight. It's got uh, timed attacks from like Final Fantasy VIII, from like the Squall's Gun, Gunblade, that kind of thing. It's got party abilities, party combos from Chrono Trigger. So it's got a lot going for it. Uh, even if the story is a bit cliche, but it works. Uh, and I've been dying to play a new, old JRPG, if that makes sense. Because uh, I kind of feel like I've played them all at this stage. So it's nice to get a new one that still plays the same way. And this is made in Unity, which was actually a real surprise. When we booted up the first time, the Unity logo came up. We're like, oh, what? Okay. Fair enough. But it's good. I had a lot of fun playing it. It's got all the trappings of your old JRPGs. It's got the party system. It's got a world map. It's got, you know, stupid stories. It's got ridiculous bosses. It's got nice combat. It's good. Give it a go. Doom 2016. Now, let me tell you how good this game is. Nasty. I don't like first person shooters. I think they're really boring and really repetitive. I haven't played one in I don't know how long. But I love this game. Because it just takes all the design from the last, God, I don't know, 15 years of first person shooters and just says no. No to all of it. So there's no iron sights. There's no regenerating health. There's no there's no reloading even. There's no there's no weapon limit. There's nothing. It's just let's go back to the way it was doing it before. And the way we did it before was lots of guns, lots of speed, and just lots of shooting everything. And it works. It just works really really well. The only way that you can get health back is to kill enemies. You can't hide in a corner. You can't reload, so there's no slowing down on that. Enemies won't hunker down behind waist-high walls. You have to go and get them. Or they will come and get you. And just speed. There's no walking. There's no sprinting. You're at full speed all the time. You have all of your weapons available all the time when you unlock them, obviously. Unless you do arcade mode, then you have them all the time. 
And it's just, it's just so good. And I don't even like first person shooters. But I played this, I played the shit out of this. And now that I'm got this footage to do this video, I'm gonna play it again. It's so good. And it's got all the old things from the old Doom games. You've got the keys, you've got secret areas, you've got secret items, you've got great guns. Look at this little guy. He's a collectible. And the music, you can, if you can hear it in the, in the background, it's just amazing. They played it at the Game Awards. It was the best part of the Game Awards. Go play Doom. I'm going to leave you with probably the best opening I've seen in a long time. I'm willing to take full responsibility for the horrible events of the last 24 hours, but you must understand our interest in their world was purely for the betterment of mankind. Everything has clearly gotten out of hand 